Hello friends and welcome back to Alternate Life, or welcome if you're new here. Today we're recapping our latest live stream where I made gluten-free, dairy-free turnovers and invited you to make them with me. This is the format of our live streams going forward. Essentially, I will post in the description of our next live stream the recipe that I am taking as an original recipe to then modify into whatever I've put in the title. So for instance, next time I'm doing vegan chocolate caramel thumbprint cookies and the original recipe isn't vegan. So this is just practice for us to modify different recipes depending on our own needs. So you definitely don't have to make them vegan or gluten-free or whatever I'm doing, but this is an opportunity for you to make them however you need to. And also ask me questions about how to bake for your modified diet. Moving forward, if you want to participate in this as a challenge, you can do exactly what I'm doing and then notify me on Instagram with your picture and modified recipe, and I can give you a shout out the next time we do a live stream or one of these recap videos. If you have a recipe that you'd like me to feature in a future live stream, please leave it in a link or a comment below and I will hopefully be able to feature that on a future live stream. So all that being explained, let's jump into the turnovers. So to start with, obviously we're making these gluten-free and my mom really r likes this certain brand of gluten-free flour that I hadn't tried before. And I figured we would give it a go for this because it is a lot less dense than our homemade gluten-free all-purpose flour, which figures because my homemade all-purpose flour, I like to focus on getting as many whole grains in there as possible. So I'm using really heavy brown rice flour and oat flour, again, made from whole oats, and just trying to pack in as many nutrients and nutrient-dense flours in there as possible, which is a great rule of thumb for things like breads, which I'm more used to, but for things like pastries, we're wanting to have the lightest flour possible so that we can actually give it a chance to have that fluff and that texture that you'd want in a pastry. So I'm going to be using the Great Value all-purpose gluten-free flour and you'll just add a cup of that to a small mixing bowl or if you're like me, a medium-sized mixing bowl because I have a tendency to spill over when I'm mixing and yeah. <laughs> so after you've added that to the bowl, um, you can just add a fourth teaspoon salt, which I like to eyeball. <laughs> and I'm going to be adding a generous half tablespoon of baking powder. So when that's mixed up, we are ready to cut in a fourth of our butter. Well, sorry, not a fourth of our butter, half of our butter, but a fourth cup of our butter. So here we're just going to take our pastry cutter and cut our butter into the flour. And scrape off some of the butter that's climbed up onto our pastry cutter. That way we can make sure all of it is getting incorporated. And now we need ice water, just about a fourth a cup, but we're going to be adding it super slowly so that we don't oversaturate our dough mixture with water, because that will really prevent the leavening action that we're hoping to happen happen. So I'm gonna get that fourth cup of water. Yeah, so we're just gonna be slowly adding this cold ice water. And as you can see, hopefully, um, the dough is starting to clump up into little balls, and that is a great sign, but we're not quite there yet. Actually, I'm gonna need quite a bit more water. Now, I was able to get some ice in advance, but if you're like us and you don't actually have an ice maker, you can always just use refrigerated water or stick some water in the freezer a little bit in advance, just so that it's nice and cold because that will help make sure that your butter, or in this case, alternative butter, which has an even lower melting point, it won't make it melt because we're wanting to keep it as solid as possible. So at the very least, just don't use 
warm water. And I'd even say like avoid room temperature water. There we go. And this is the dough ball that we're looking for. So we can shift gears a little bit and put some flour down onto our rolling surface. Okay, and then we're just gonna roll out our dough. As you can see here, my dough is pretty wet again. Um, this is essentially what it was like yesterday, but it's not the end of the world. Just make sure that your rolling pin has plenty of flour on it and we'll be good to go. And here we're basically going for the dimensions of like 12 by six inches roughly definitely doesn't need to be exact but i'm gonna say that's about right and now it's time for our other half of butter you'll take the next half and essentially you're just slicing it this time and then spreading it onto the dough mixture, but just two thirds of the dough mixture. And when I say spreading, I don't mean like try to get the butter into the dough really well. Uh, if it's just like let it rest on the surface and that is perfectly fine. Here, we're just going to fold over the third of dough that wasn't buttered. And then we'll fold over the part that yeah, like that. <laughs> Perfect. And now mine is actually sticking quite a bit to our counter space. So I'm just going to carefully try to <laughs> unstick it, roll it out again, and we're going to repeat that same process. And like I said, <laughs> Same process, so we're just going to be slicing the butter again onto two thirds of our dough. So here, I only covered about half of our dough this time. That is totally fine if you're in the same boat. Essentially, we're just going to fold it again. And I'm actually going to fold it into quarters like this. And then I'm going to stick it into the same bowl we were just mixing in and stick it in the fridge for 20 minutes. Okay, I'm just going to be leaving this here because we are going to be rolling it out again. So we will need our flour still and everything. So if you're one of those people who likes to clean up as you go, <laughs> try to refrain right now because we're going to be shifting gears over to the stove now for our filling, but we will be coming back to this. I'm actually using blueberries that have been frozen, so I won't be needing to add any sort of water to this. If you're using fresh fruit, you'll probably wanna add about a quarter cup of water to a cup of your berries or whatever fruit that you're using. I guess you could be making like apple turnovers or something. So to start with, I'm just putting a half cup of the berries in a small saucepan and then I'm going to be ba not bashing them, <laughs> mashing them with the back of my spoon and letting that essentially simmer for a little bit. So I'll bring it up to a boil and then let it simmer for about two minutes. That was a bit of a mess, but I wanted to add some of the liquid from when they thawed into here because it does just need a little more liquid and ours just starts boiling super fast. When it does start boiling, just make sure that you're stirring constantly so that you don't get anything sticking to the bottom of your pan or burning. And then, now we're ready to add our sugar. I'm just going to be adding about 3 8 cup, which if you're using a fourth cup measure, that's just a fourth cup and then a half of that again. And then I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Then we're just gonna add about a half tablespoon of lemon juice, which I'm just gonna squeeze in directly. And then just a pinch of salt. 
And then the mixture, mixture is ready to be brought to a boil again and we're just going to do the exact same thing where we bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about two minutes. And with this one, you'll want to be stirring it constantly. And once that approximate two minutes is up, you can go ahead and take it off the heat and add your remaining cups of berries. So I'm going to be adding, I think two cups. Yeah, two cups of blueberries to this like syrupy mixture. And then we'll just be leaving it on the stove to cool while we work with our dough again. So we can get our dough back out from the fridge. And this time you'll want to make sure that you have some sort of egg wash. This is also a good point to get out a pan for your turnovers. Um, as you can see here, I've got just a pan with a silicone lining and my basting brush for the egg wash. So here, in case you were worried about how we didn't roll out our butter before, now is the time that we're going to do that. And at this point, it's best to get it as close to a square as possible. And then we'll just be cutting the edges so that, well, trimming the edges really, so that we have a slightly better square. So here, as you can see, my square is definitely not perfect, but I'm actually going to fix that in the next step. So I'm actually just going to cut this square across into two triangles. So folding this over loosely, without like pinching it or anything, I'm just going to cut along the edge again so that we've got a nice good triangle. And then I'm just gonna stick that as is onto our pan and do the same thing with this other one, which actually looks great as it is. So I'm just gonna stick it over on the pan with the other one. At this point, I'm just gonna get all this flour and dough off my hands. And then we're good to bring our filling over here and start on our egg washing process. I think I'm gonna flip this guy over just because I'm hoping that if I have the thickest part on top, we'll be able to get most of our leavening action. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to preheat the oven now to 450. So it is going to take at least our oven a little while, but I intentionally waited that way we could stick our turnovers in before it actually comes to full temperature. Because I'm hoping that by doing that, we will be able to get more of our leavening action going. And that's what this challenge is all about, right? Trying to get as much of that flaky layering going. So yeah, if you haven't done an egg wash before, we're essentially just painting the egg onto the turnover. And right now I'm doing the inside surface. And then as soon as that whole surface is done, you can stick your filling into the middle. And then we just fold this over. And then we grab a fork and you can just pinch down those sides. And then as soon as that's done, you can just take your basting brush again and brush the outside. I guess I also didn't explain how to make an egg wash. I had already done this previously. Essentially, you can just take an egg and beat it. And that's really all you need to do to have your very own egg wash. Yeah, so even if you're not gluten-free or dairy-free, this is definitely a recipe that I recommend trying because it's so good. So even if you do use the original with wheat flour or butter, it's totally fine and will still work for you. Now we're good to pop these in the oven. We're at 375-ish right now, so hopefully we can get some of our, oh, I didn't do the egg wash. Hopefully we can get some of our leavening action going really soon here and right off the bat. Just so you guys can kind of see here, these rose quite a bit and 
I'm not sure you'll be able to see any of the layering that's going on. There's quite a bit of layering that you can see in the dough as well. I think they look beautiful. I'm just gonna set them on the stove to cool while I finish with making the icing. Yeah, this is the most basic glaze ever, but I think the white is a pretty addition to the top of a turnover. Now, of course, after you make this icing, just wait for your turnovers to cool before adding them on top. And you've made delicious turnovers. I hope you enjoy.